Let's look at this program called Factoring by Grouping. It's not very difficult. And it shows you, this program shows you the steps that you take, although it becomes more useful in more complicated problems in higher math. But this is the simplest way, and it was because it was easy for me to write this program, but it does get you through the steps. <coughs> The clue that you want to deal with factoring by grouping is the fact that you don't have a trinomial, you have four things to, to factor. Now, in the higher math, the four things might have multiple letters, and if you need to factor it, factoring by grouping is always a possibility. I have given you these terms in, order, in an order where they can be factored as they are. In more complicated situations, you might have to rearrange terms so that something common could come out of them. But I was doing this just as an introduction and actually did it pretty quickly, so I didn't make very sophisticated problems. When you see the four terms, what you want to do first is to separate the problem into groups. Now, in reality, if, the, if they didn't have anything in common, you might consider rearranging the terms, but you don't have to here. So then you look for the common factor in each group. Now, 3 and 11 have no common factors, but there is the x. If it doesn't seem that there's any number in common, there's always 1. 1 is common to everything. Now, I'm looking at 12 and 44. 44 is 4 and 11, and 4 can go into 12, so this looks like it's 4. And then we'll check the common factors of each group. And if it's right, then these parentheses show up. Then what you have to do is go ahead and factor out that x. So this would factor out into 3x minus 11. It's the backwards of the distributive property. You can be sure that you've done it right if you imagine in your head x times 3x is 3x squared. x times minus 11 is minus 11x. Over here, we want to factor out 12. Pull a 4 out of 12, we get 3x minus 11. And double check, 4 times 3 is 12. It works. Now, factoring by grouping has been done incorrectly, or is in an incorrect form, if you don't end up with this awesome coincidence. If you don't get this coincidence, we have a 3x minus 11 and a 3x minus 11 in both of these quantities. If you don't get that coincidence, you better start over again. So we'll check the factorization. And now what we have to do is something that's a little sophisticated. This is where your eyes have to be opened. We have two groups, this group and this group, and they have something in common. What is it? It's the 3x minus 11. See, there's a 3x minus 11 here, and there's a 3x minus 11 here. It's common to both groups. If we factor 3x minus 11 out of this group, we are left with x. If we factor 3x minus 11 over here, we are left with 4, but we need to put in the plus 4. And now we check, and we will win. Oops, <laughs> except I can't type. It says check your input. Put. So I had... Apparently, I stuttered when I did this x plus 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, and it didn't like it. So let's see if I can correct that problem. It's not, it must have lots of 4s in there. So let's see. 3x plus 4. You can't see it now, but let's see. x plus 4. My keyboard stuck there, but now I have taken 3x minus 11 out of this group and gotten an x, 3x minus 11 out of this group and gotten a 4. Now we should check. Makes one correct. We can do a new problem one more. Separate into factors. Look what's common. 12, let's not go into 96, but 6 does. So I'm going to say maybe 6x. 6, isn't it? 16. Oh, maybe more than that. Maybe 12 goes in. Oh, maybe 12 goes into 96. I lied to you. I didn't mean that. 12x. Let's see. 12 times what gives me? 8. 
12 times 8 gives you 96. I didn't see it right at first. 7x and 56, what do they have in common? 7. Check the common factors, and since they're correct, these other quantities show up. If I had stupidly gone over, I wouldn't have got this. Now, if, if you find factoring these is difficult, you might want to factor the easiest one first. This would be x minus 8, and if I've done it right, then this too should be x minus 8, and if you think about it, it is. Check the factorization, and now we want to see this group, and this group have something in common. It's the x minus 8, and when we take the x minus 8 away from this group, we get 12x. Take the x minus 8 from this group, we get a plus 7. If we were to FOIL this, it would give us this back. So check our answer. We win. That makes two. Hope you understand factoring by grouping. It wouldn't matter if you put the 12x plus 7 down first and then the x minus 8, because multiplication is commutative and these quantities could be reversed and it'd still be the same answer. Thanks.